Hey everyone, Pete Calandra here. Today's video is the third installment of the series I've done taking a look at Spitfire Audio's Abbey Road 2 Iconic Strings Library. While the first two videos focused in on ensemble patches, today we take a look at the solo patches. Instead of just doing a dry run through of the sounds out of context, what I've done is take a cue that I wrote for a film I scored for CNN a few years ago and reworked it for this library. We'll go through section by section, instrument by instrument, part by part. I'll play around with mic positions, do some different velocity things for some of the shorter articulations so you can hear the dynamic range. Because I did not use legato in violin one, violin two, and the bass instruments, I worked together some passages and you can hear all the instruments at the end using the performance legato patch. There'll be timestamps in the description box below so that you can easily navigate through this video. If you like this video, give a thumbs up. For more content, please subscribe and to be notified, ring that bell. Please leave any comments or questions down below. Thank you so much for watching and let's get right into it. Before we do a breakdown, let's do a playthrough and then I'll be back on the other side and we'll go through all the individual articulations, etc., etc., etc. Here we go. Okay, that's the entire track. Let's do a breakdown and we'll just go through instrument by instrument, section by section, etc. So the piece starts out with spiccato cellos. Let's open that up. And what we'll do here is take a look at the setting. We have spiccatissimo as my articulation here. And the way I've got this set up is, well, it's just LCR2. Right, so that's the Red 47 Omni mics in an LCR configuration. So you see I have this going back and forth between a solo piece and a chamber piece or with two cellos because I've got double stops here. When I originally wrote this, I believe I used the Spitfire chamber strings. Let's take a listen to that again. And also I sequenced this a while ago. You could see some of my velocities are a little bit too even, but you still get a good sense of what this sounds like. Let's take a listen. Nice, let's play around with the sound. So we've got studio two, plate one second. Let's add a little bit more reverb and take a listen. Nice. 
Nice. They really did a good job with the reverbs on this particular instrument. Let's change mic positions. Let's do vintage two because that'll be the most different. It's using Abbey Road's red mixing console, parallel compression from the RS-24, and it's all going through the J37 tape machine. And Vintage 2 is different because it uses the ADT, automatic double tracking process, which was invented for the Beatles. I'll talk about that in another video. Let's take a listen to this. You can really see that this is much edgier. Interesting, right? How you can just change the whole character by changing the microphone selection. And I believe the next bit that comes in is spiccato violins and violas. So violin one, spiccato, different articulation than spiccatissimo. And again, I'm using the same LCR2. And we'll also play around with this studio two plate one second, just to add a little bit of, of ambience. Let's take it from where the melody comes in and we'll solo this out. Good. Let me bring up the velocity so that it's a little bit edgier and let's hear how that compares the dynamics. So I'll just bring this up like this. So that's Probably I would never play something like that with velocity 127 so often, but this is a test. So let's hear what that does. Actually, I might because it's not that overbearing. Nice edge to it. Let's also do this with a different mic signal and we can go back and forth between the two. So let's bring up that vintage one again. And this time, let's also add mix one, which is close mic'd, and then I can just turn them on and off. So we'll start with vintage two, and then you'll see me switching them on and off as we go back and forth. Every one of those mic signals has a different character to it, and it's up to you to figure out what's the most important one for the piece of music you're working on, or the most appropriate one, I would rather say. Let's move on. Let's see, violin two spiccato. So I think it's doing the same thing, but in harmony. Oh, I'm using spiccatissimo with this, right? Just to have a contrast in articulation. They're all using the same mix for this piece, keeping it consistent, right? LCR2. You can hear the difference between spiccatissimo and spiccato. These are much spikier. Let's take a listen with increased dynamics. And now we'll reduce the dynamics. Interesting. And now let's play around with the different mic positions. And for this one, let's do mix two and vintage one. And we'll go back and forth. So we'll start with vintage one, which is the red console and the compression and the tape, but no ADT. Interesting, it's almost got a more nasally sound, more edgy and more in your face. Let's take a listen, and then I'll start switching back and forth between the different signals. Mix 1 and uh, LCR2 have a nice combination.
interesting. Let's take this one and play around with our reverb. So we're doing studio two plate one second. What happens if we, let's say we try the large hall and we'll leave the same amount of reverb. All right, and I believe there's also viola spiccato here. Let's solo this out. And again, it's the same mic position as before. So I'm using spiccatissimo here, LCR2. And I haven't played around with... I really like that dig in when you get over above a certain velocity with these spiccatissimos. They really help drive the piece. Let's exaggerate the upper part of our dynamics here and listen to that. Here we go. And the opposite. Bring it down. Interesting. You can sort of hear the backbeat there a little bit with that one velocity level, I think. It's pretty cool. All right, so now let's play around with our different mic signal paths. So we got LCR2. Let's try LCR1. Let me turn this one off and mix one, and we'll go back and forth between those two. So starting off with mix one, and then we'll do LCR one. Here we go. Really cool. So now let's take a listen to just those top three bits together. Nice. Really like the way they sound. Let's listen to the bass spiccato, and then we'll listen to the low end, all of it together. So spiccatissimo in the bass, and again, with our LCR2, I have just a little bit more of the Studio 2 plate one second on here. So let's solo that out and take a listen. Not sure a bass player can play that, but that's besides the point. Let's take a listen with this and the cello spiccato together. Our next situation here is that there is in violin one, we've got some tremolos and then into harmonics. So let's listen to those as a unit. So that's this and this. Let's take a look at the, again, our same mic position, LCR2. And then for the tremolo, I'm just using the regular tremolo for this, not the measured and LCR2. And I'm not doing anything with the effects here. Let's take a listen. Let me actually play those tremolos in. It doesn't give you a really good sense of what they are. All 
Okay, moving forward, we also have violin two doing tremolos. So let's listen to the two of those together, right? Because then I think you get a better sense of what's happening there with the overall aggregate sound. Here we go. That could actually have more reverb on that. So let's, let's bathe that in reverb and see. You can hear the reverb there. Now, in this next section, we've got some legato stuff and some pizzicato stuff. So let's look at our pizzicato first, and we'll start with our viola. Let's make it a lot softer. Interesting, I really had to crank the volume to get that heard. And let's do the opposite and really just max out those velocities. Okay, and now let's play around with mic positions. And I think for this one, let's try Vintage 2 because that'll be edgier. And let's combine that with Mix 1, which is right in your face. Let's, let's take a listen to that. Let's move on to the celli and the bass where there's other pizzicato. And again, nothing special, LCR2. Here we go, let's take a listen. Okay, let's take a listen to this now. And I know that there's a few spots where it's a little fast for a human to play, but think of this as Colin Nancaro with a player piano roll. got a really nice sound, I have to say. Let's uh, jam up the velocities here and see what that's like. Here we go. That's cool. Let's try one other thing, just for fun. Let's try a big dynamic change over that measure. Here we go. Very smooth. Let's try LCR1 and mix one. And we'll go back and forth. So we'll start off with mix one and then go back and forth between those three. Here we go. seems to be taking a second to load the samples in, which I didn't notice on the other mic positions. Interesting. It's interesting. It seems to take a second with the cello to load those mic positions in, which I wasn't noticing in some of the other bits. But do, they do have a different sound, all of them, and you can make a really nice aggregate. And then let's add the bass pizzicato in with that. I think that the cello sound great, and I, the bass sounds really good too. Let's solo the bass out. Here we go.
I've had issues with the bass patch on some of the other Spitfire solo strings. Not this. I really like this one very much. Sounds good. Now let's listen to all of the pizzicatos together in that section, the cello, the bass, and the viola. And I'm also using the Spitfire harp in that section, doubling the pizzicatos gives it a nice sheen in the background as an aggregate sound. Here we go, let's take a listen. All right, next, let's listen to some legatos. And we start out with a viola legato. So with this one, you can see I've got the legato portamento set up. Everything will be sliding around. Let me close this down and we'll open it up again in a second and we'll take a listen. Let's try the other legato, slurred. Sounds good. Now, I've doubled that with the cello, so let's listen to how the cello responds to this. And I'm using the performance legato here, and we'll also go through the other two types of legato and play around with it. Let's take a listen to the slurred, and then we'll move on to the portamento. Moving on to the portamento. Well, that sounds a little drunk, but just get the effect, you can hear what it sounds like, and then it's up to you to program it the way you want. What I think I'm going to do is, at this point, I've used up all the different articulations found in this piece, missing some of the legato in violin one and violin two. So I've put together a little bit with violin one, violin two, viola, cello, and bass, each doing a solo bit using the performance legato so you can hear what that sounds like.
And that brings us to the end of the third video in this series, going through and reviewing slash demoing Spitfire Audio's Abbey Road 2 Iconic Strings Library. My personal thoughts on this library have a lot to do with the way that I produce music. The music I write, whether it's my personal albums or my film scores, is to use a combination of acoustic instruments, electronic instruments, whether they're one of my analog or digital synthesizers or a virtual synthesizer, and sample libraries. I'm not the kind of person who composes music where I want it to sound exactly like a real player would do it. In other words, it's a mock-up of a piece that's going to be played by live players. That's not how I work. I work that I'm creating soundscapes that are going to be on albums or broadcast, and that's the way I work, and it has to sound good. It doesn't have to sound authentic, it has to sound good. And with that in mind, I find this library to be very useful. That being said, there are some people who want to hear exact mock-ups, and you won't find certain articulations in this library. You won't find Colegno, you won't find Bartok Pitts, and you won't find Consordino. And so I asked about that, I sent an email in, and I'm just going to read the response I got from Spitfire. And I spoke with the product team for Abbey Road 2, and the decision to leave out some articulations in favor of others is because Iconic Strings focuses on the articulations found in the classic recordings made in Studio 2 and the crossover between these and the scoring world. There are no plans to add these in a future update, but the product team are aware of your feedback. And then they go on to say, the more classical film scoring articulations can, of course, be found in libraries like the BBC Symphony Orchestra. They can also be found in the Sacconi Quartet and in the Solo Strings Library of Spitfires. So that's what I was told from the Spitfire support team, and I hope that that clears things up for you. Again, all of these different libraries are a different colors for your palette. There's not one library that's going to fulfill every one of your needs. If you're a film scoring person or somebody who writes media music, it's expensive, but you just constantly building up your palette. I, for example, have a harp library that I bought, I don't know, 20 years ago, right, from Sonic Implants. Their harp from their symphonic range, which I used to use in Giga Studio back in the day, I think that that sounds beautiful. It sounds, the actual sound of that recording is better than stuff made in the past five years. And I use it all over the place. I didn't use it in this track because I was trying to keep things all Spitfire, but I do use it often. So I have been buying sample libraries for a long time. And it, that's why I've got, you know, 10 terabytes worth of sample libraries. Anyway, I hope that you found these three videos useful. I've enjoyed making them. Please like, subscribe, share, ring that bell, do all that stuff. Leave a comment down below. I've been Pete Calandra. Thank you again so much for watching, and I will catch you on the next one.